Okay, Joel, I was on uh, on holiday for uh, for two weeks. So uh, what what happened in the in the cryptocurrency world? Um, well, Joris, we didn't wait around for you. Um, a lot of things happened, starting with the Amsterdam conference. Okay, that was Bitcoin 2014. That's right. And a lot of movement in the 2.0 space, you know, MasterCoin, Counterparty, Ethereum, were all represented um, in force. Obviously, the foundation is having lots of um, fun times as usual. <laughs> Did they make a mess of it? <laughs> well, you know, there's, uh, there's always people who are happy to point out things that others are. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> yeah, Dogecoin has a foundation. That's the new announcement. A foundation. So. Okay. Oh, that's the reaction to that. Okay. Yeah. So oh, nice. that's, that's worth knowing about. So you mentioned about Dogecoin that there was some kind of uh, Dogecoin article on CoinDesk. Dogecoin yeah, industry. Dogecoin has been interesting. It, it has a really big problem coming up technologically, and um, you know, the, there's no obvious and easy solutions to it because. They don't actually want to pay the transaction fees, and the miners don't want to mine uh, Dogecoin. So, oh, oh. Well, I mean, they continue to grow as far as users um, and active users, but um, this actual, you know, technological problems. Who knows how, how they're going to deal with it? So, do you know of any any solutions that were proposed so far? What's the what's the current? Um... Well, the thing that was on Reddit yesterday was that they may try and subsidize. Um, ASCII things to put put in and and assume that the people that they give these these miners to are gonna just use it to mine Dogecoin all the time. I, I did. Most people, including Tim, who wrote this article, don't think that's sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, there's not really a lot of real economic activity that's happening within Dogecoin. So that's the sort of part of the issue is that they can't seem to swallow these mining yeah. these mining fees. Yeah. I think, I mean, as part of the, the Bitcoin Foundation fund that you mentioned, there was some awards or some kind of bounty proposed for for some somebody to replace the Bitcoin Foundation. Oliver Jensen, the, the, the Belgian guy. So I, I know some people actually working on a, on a decentralized implementation of the Bitcoin Foundation on top of uh, Ethereum. Ah, well, uh, will it involve uh, artificial intelligence that decides us, decides where to put the funds? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, if they just want to keep up the current behavior of Bitcoin Foundation, I'm not sure what's required of that. I mean, you could have still have people, members vote for, for fund allocation. Mm -hmm. I think that might be sufficient for a first uh, first implementation. Well, we'll definitely have to cover that in the future. If it, yeah, we'll, we'll, track, uh, we'll track the progress of that, but that will be mm -hmm. a very good uh, use case for, uh, for smart contracts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, one other interesting thing to come out of the Amsterdam conference was this announcement from Mike Hearn. He's working with Circle. Had it anything to do with uh, with that? No, he um, he has this you know crowdfunding platform thing that uh, I, I, it's not really complete or, or working. I don't think in a in a sort of robust way at this moment. But it's ah, uh, your light, kind of lighthouse. Concept. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, it's like a Kickstarter, but totally on the blockchain. And, you know, one of the things I'm personally interested in working on at this moment is things that kind of have more of an equity component or kind of really provide some sort of long-term value to their users. And this is more like donation-based, but yeah. it's, it's still very interesting. Yeah. And obviously it uses uh, Bitcoin or is it a, a more of an altcoin platform? No, no, it's all Bitcoin-based. Okay, of course. Yeah, I guess no surprise giving Mike's involvement. And what about Ethereum stuff? Uh, George, I think there are, there are a few, uh, few blog posts are there. About uh, the, the the distribution models with, with these cryptocurrencies, how that would uh, work out. Uh, Vitalik wrote it. Uh, what is it? Two weeks ago. Um, and there was another one. Oh yeah, that was even before. Like yep. I mean, the, the proof of work alg algorithms instead of just having a, a fixed implementation and stick with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you evolve it over time? And and what are the, the considerations there? Also to prevent uh, ASIC mining. Or maybe yeah. make it so interesting that the ASIC mine actually will 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 ben be beneficiary just be f because they're just executing all the the the, the entire stack of the platform. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the interesting things you know here that actually fits into Ethereum and Dogecoin is that humans are not entirely rational actors. Well, so there's kind of you know a variety of impulses and things that motivate people. Some of which is money, um, and so, you know sometimes it's more money now. And there's a lot of things like technological innovation that 
people do because I think it's valuable um, and because it's cool. So I, I think I mean yeah. that's also a problem with, with just economics in in general, or a problem mm -hmm. or just aspect of economics in general and uh, and day trading these kind of things. Mm -hmm. I mean you yeah. cannot just rationalize everything. There's so much yeah. uh, so much yeah. more involved. Uh, it tends to be reductive. So and then when you work on a model that's stripped down, then you miss a lot. So unfortunate. Also, this uh, this blog post by uh, Maran, which is right. also from the yeah. Ethereum project about uh, creating your own cryptocurrency. Yeah, I thought this was fantastic. Maybe even better than the stuff we've done, George. Oh, so. okay. Well, we should. Uh, <laughs> we might have to. Uh, we should interview him, I guess. <laughs> or, uh, Maran Coin, have him uh, have him feature this. Uh, there was also this uh, a couple, uh, I think three uh, screencasts by uh, Stefan Tool and uh, Jeffrey. From yeah, the, from the Go clients, explaining, uh, explaining how you uh, well would implement any, any uh, something on top of the Go client and uh, and uh, the the language that uh, that uh, Jeffrey created. Does uh, that mean we have something else in addition to Serpent and LLL? Yeah, there's this uh, Mutin Mutin language. Mm -hmm. It's more like a, a statically typed uh, programming language, and it would be just another. A competitor, I guess, to Serpent and uh, an LL. So um, this, this is the question I get uh, asked, you know, a lot. Or is, is this stuff going to settle down sometime? Or are we going to? What do you think? I don't know. That's that's difficult. I mean, uh, I guess the same with 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 Linux distributions and all these kind of uh, open source things. I mean, there will be at some point an explosion and then some kind of dropping of support of languages and and maybe some languages won't be maintained. I yeah. think we'll, we'll, uh, there will be more languages, uh, but uh, I mean, some of the the reasons for for creating these alternatives, I think um, Jeffrey created it because just because he doesn't like Python. I don't know. People just have their own agenda for for creating these kind of things. But I mean, it's fine as long as they all compile down to the same Ethereum bytecode. Um, then it would also. Uh, I mean, you can still run it yeah, on yeah. the same virtual machine. Yeah, they need to compile reliably, though, right? Without bugs. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, also in the, the LLL uh, tutorial, right? Uh, there was a change. Let me see. Little syntax change to the LLL language, where in the initialization block, um, basically, instead of having two, two code blocks out there, one for initialization part and one for the body, you would mm -hmm. always have just one code block, and then you would just return the compiled code and that mm. would be the body of your contract and that will be mm. stored so that's a bit of a that's a bit of a change interesting yeah. and what about this ether x thing yeah another uh, interesting announcement of a decentralized exchange on top of uh, ethereum called ether x yeah so far there's just a landing page and uh, an faq but uh, i know the guys working on this and currently they're completing their white papers and making their their projects uh, they want to make it open source and available and they've already added a couple of people to the to the repository so they're thinking how they can scale this and how they can keep, get the, the community involved. So maybe you can fill me in then. Why do we need another decentralized exchange? Do, is there some problem with MasterCoin or Counterparty? I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't used uh, either of them. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know what they're, imp you know, uh, what they expect they'll improve, but I guess we'll wait and see how well it works. And yeah, so. I think maybe it's just a technical. Um, I guess it's sort of a bridging mechanism between Ethereum and Bitcoin. Sure, so I mean that yeah. that would allow you to uh, exchange between multiple currencies and and Ethereum contracts and uh, etc. So you would I, I mean, you would need such implementation on top of Ethereum anyway. So this might just be. Yeah, I, I actually never understood how that would be solved. So um, to get an easy kind of on ramp for Bitcoin into Ethereum. So if there is some I, kind. I, of I don't know. Maybe so far it's just for internal internal coins. So you would need to yeah. have some kind of Bitcoin coin on top of Ethereum. So yeah, yeah, um, it's a tokenized exactly version of Bitcoin. Right. But yeah. that's, I guess that's the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, they don't have the the Bitcoin SPV client implemented on top of Ethereum yet, but. Um, this is well, just for internal currencies. I'm going to sign up for their newsletter right now. Okay. And that's all for this week. Hopefully, we'll make it every week from now on. Yeah, that's it. All right, Joel. Okay. Ciao. Thanks, George.